Snail Games and its CEO have been accused of game manipulation once again in a controversy that spans years, thousands of players, and a suppressed publisher. I'll be examining the controversy once again, but if you'd like an in-depth analysis on the entire history of Snail Games and Wang Shihai, its CEO, watch my video on the subject. TEA is an infamous tribe that resides within ARK's official conquest servers, where rates are boosted, server and tribe caps are larger, and where the only goal is conquest. These spaces are meant for players looking for the most competitive experience the game has to offer. So, obviously the stakes are very high. Entire communities populate single tribes, and battle endlessly in a constant power struggle. Previous viewers will remember my interviews with PvP players, and the cheats that run rampant, deeply influencing the landscape. While cheats are a regular subject in the competitive gaming sphere, ARK has always had a specific flavor to it, and the tea is steaming. In 2016, on April 10th, TEA is formed and they start playing on PC servers. In 2017, on June 20th, TEA expands to Xbox servers. On August 29th, they expand to PlayStation servers. October 1st, an unknown tribe attacks TEA's main base, but is repelled. In 2018, on January 15th, TEA becomes infamous for exploiting glitches in Ark Survival Evolved. On June 20th, TEA is temporarily banned from ARK due to exploiting game glitches. On July 15th, they are unbanned from ARK and return to play. On December 10th, another major battle occurs between TEA and an unknown tribe, resulting in TEA's victory. In 2019, on June 15th, TEA wins the first official ARK Survival Evolved tournament. And then on September 20th, they form an alliance with the BLDX tribe. December 15th, TEA and BLDX dominate the second official ARK Survival Evolved tournament. In 2020, March 1st, TEA moves its main base to Genesis Part 1. On June 20th, they split into two factions, TEA East and TEA West. September 20th, TEA West is defeated in a major conflict by an unknown tribe. November 15th, East Tribe wins the third official ARK Survival Evolved tournament. On December 5th, TEA West Tribe disbands. In 2021 on April 1st, TEA merges with BLDX to form a new tribe. On June 15th, TEA wins the fourth official ARK tournament. On August 15th, TEA moves its main base to Genesis Part 2. And then on October 20th, TEA wins the fifth official ARK Survival Evolved tournament. In 2022, on April 15th, TEA BLDX disbands, and then May 15th, former members of TEA BLDX forms the new TEA tribe. On December 10th, the new TEA tribe wins the sixth official Ark Survival Evolved tournament. In January of 2023, a YouTube account by the name of Wilfred Adventula appeared releasing a series of videos including leaked DMs and voice messages between Snail Games CEO Wing Shi Hai and employees. These leaks centered around Shi's constant demands for spawns and cheats throughout the years. In an escalating series of events, the Island Boys Tribe, a group of hundreds with respected ARK YouTubers among them, launched an attack against TEA on a server supposedly run by them. As the Island Boys started gaining the upper hand, the server was suspiciously reset multiple times to a point before TEA started losing. This pattern repeated several times, leading to speculations that TEA was manipulating the game through admin privileges, real time. The controversy reached a boiling point when the Island Boys decided to mobilize their forces for an all-out attack against TEA. However, just as the Island Boys were on the brink of victory, their entire tribe was hit with a global ban. The entire event was captured live on multiple Twitch streams and ignited community attention on Twitter. By the way, follow my Twitter. Wildcard released their veil of a response to the conquest bans in their most recent community crunch which also included a handful of updated assets for ASA, which I might remind you is three months from scheduled release. And we've seen five whole assets, but that's besides the point. If you know of an exploit on official servers, be sure to check out our bounty thread. We provide bounties for anyone who can report hacks or exploits of any kind, except not really. That can have a serious impact on gameplay or server stability on our official online servers. We've rewarded players with over 50k.
We'll see how this affects things. I mean, the bounty system isn't new. Wildcard is just reminding us it exists. Nothing seems to be changing, really. In my opinion, it's just more bullshit. I'm sorry, but it's classic wildcard. They've already had this evidence for years and thousands of individual cases leading back to TEA and above. Something could have been done a long time ago, and it's probably too late by now. I'd like to compare the Snail Games controversy with another similar event. The T2O scandal is a significant event in the history of EVE Online, developed by CCP Games. EVE Online is renowned for its complex economy, politics, and warfare, largely determined by player actions. In this game world, alliances of player corporations often vie for control over resources and territory, particularly in the player-controlled Nullsec space. T2O, a developer for EVE Online, was concurrently an active member of a dominant player alliance, the Band of Brothers. This dual role paved the way for a significant conflict of interest. The scandal broke out when a player named Kagutsuman hacked into Bob's private forum and found evidence suggesting that T2O was using his developer access to spawn and distribute rare and valuable items throughout his alliance. The revelation of this scandal caused a significant upheaval within the EVE Online community. Many players were outraged at the potential for a developer to exploit his position in such a way that could significantly influence the game's balance and economy. Calls for severe punishment for T2O and for CCP Games to put measures in place to prevent such abuse in the future were widespread. In response to the controversy, CCP Games immediately conducted an internal investigation, which confirmed that T2O had indeed spawned and handed out several high-tier items. T2O was subsequently reprimanded and stripped of any roles that could directly influence the game. He later left CCP Games. CCP also took steps to prevent similar incidents in the future by implementing stricter controls over their employees and game activities. They established the Council of Stellar Management, a player-elected body intended to provide oversight of developer power and act as a liaison between the player base and CCP games. Both the Snail Games controversy and the EVE Online T2O scandal involve allegations of unfair advantage and manipulation within the game by individuals who had ties to the game's developers. These are serious issues within the gaming community as they potentially undermine the integrity of the game, the level playing field, and trust in the developers. Both controversies involved a potential conflict of interest, T2O being an active player and developer, and Snail Game CEO allegedly having a position within the TEA tribe. Both incidents triggered significant backlash from the respective gaming communities, leading to demands for transparency, fairness, and changes in developer policy. The most significant difference lies in the response of the game developers to their respective controversies. CCP Games, in the wake of the T2O scandal, conducted an internal investigation, confirmed the allegations, reprimanded the involved developer, and implemented measures to prevent similar incidents in the future, including establishing the Council of Stellar Management, and, on the other hand, any response to the years of accusation against Wildcard and Snail Games has been unclear. In the EVE Online scandal, the advantage was the spawning and distribution of rare items. In ARK, the alleged unfair advantage was much more complex, involving server resets, global bans, cheats, and aggressive employer conduct. In the T2O scandal, evidence came in the form of hacked forums and showed T2O's misconduct. CCP Games also admitted to the malpractice after an internal investigation. In contrast, the Snail Games controversy seems to be mostly based on leaked DMs, voice messages, and the suspicious in-game events involving TEA Tribe, with no definitive response from Snail Games or Wildcard. So what can be done about Snail Games and Wing Shihai? Not much. The truth is, forced action against the CEO of a game's publisher takes years and buckets of money. The fate of ARK and Wildcard will most likely have been decided in a court of public opinion by then. What we can do is influence decisions kept far above our heads. You can report ARC to the platform you purchased it from, make sure to mention snail games and accusations of cheating. We can flood the bounty thread with snail games accusations. Report ARC and its publisher to the FTC, ESRB, or FCC. You can find links below. If you have any connection to TEA or snail games, I want to talk to you. 
I'm building a picture of how things operate, but have to ensure I have valid information. Email me at konoytcontact at gmail.com. Please remember that developers and publishers are very different entities, and Wildcard has limited freedoms based on its contractual obligations to snail games. Spreading hate to the individuals that bring you the game is not the way to solve this.